What's up, YouTube? Night Edge here again, uh, doing another quick little video for you. Of uh, this is the Microtech Direct Delta, loaned to me by Mr. Eddie underscore four one one off uh, Instagram. I'm gonna have him down below too in the description if you want to go check him out um, or forget about it. Go ahead and uh, let you guys know about uh, Instagram, TikTok, and email. I also have. Uh, I'm also on there. Uh, YouTube is my primary thing, but if you want to check me out, <clears throat> go down below and uh, hit the like button if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. I appreciate everyone, all the new subscribers, everybody that's, uh, that's watched all my stuff, commented, subscribed, helped support me like Mr. Eddie here. Uh, means the world to me. I really appreciate it. And uh, contact me on uh, Instagram DM or uh, email, probably the best couple ways to contact me there. But anyway, this is the Microtech Direct Delta out the front uh, switchblade, if you want to call it that. Um, Microtech, American-made company, started by Tony Marfioni. Marfione? Marfioni? I don't know. Probably messing that up. But uh, they got a lot of great stuff. Uh, they're they're kind of synonymous with uh, quality as far as out the front knives go. USA-made out the front knives have got... You know, every everything they make, they put a lot of good quality into their production stuff, especially their custom stuff. I've never gotten to handle any of that. I've just seen a lot of uh, a lot of other people handle it. But uh, from everything that I've seen that they have to offer has been uh, pretty cool. And uh, I do have a couple other. Uh, this this isn't mine. This is going back to Mr. Eddie whenever I'm done with it, unfortunately. But um, I do have some some other uh, microtechs that I own. I have the the uh, Ultratech, and uh, I got the, the Stitch, which actually I guess I should probably get that out since I'm doing a Microtech video, but um, put those down there when I do size comparisons here in a minute. Anyway, that's kind of like a little overview of it. Um, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get the tape measure out. This bad boy, this is a big old knife, y'all. This is a pretty good size knife, I would say. Um, so if you look, Especially for a switchblade. If you look at the handle, if you don't count the glass breaker and you measure the handle, you're looking right at five and an eighth. And if you count the glass breaker, you're looking right at five and five eighths, right? So, uh, glass breaker adds an extra, you know, three eighths or so of an inch. Um, maybe a little more than that. Depending on how you look at it, I guess, or where you measure it to and from. But that's the handle overall length on this thing. Um, right at nine inches i'd say if you go if you measure it all the way from the tip of the point right there on the blade to the handle to the back side of the handle right here you're looking just at nine inches and if you go with the glass breaker too you're looking at nine and a half inches so uh nine and a half inches pretty good uh size knife there you know pretty large knife blade length you're looking at if you go from the tip all the way to where the end of the blade is right there, you're looking at over, um, overall blade length right at three and seven eighths. If you go all the way to the handle to where it meets the handle at. But if you look at the cutting edge, about three and a half, right at three and a half right there. Now, this is a dagger ground and serrated on one side. So that three and a half means you got three and a half on this side, three and a half on this side. So, you know, really with a dagger ground blade like that, you know, you it's um, seven, you know, for your cutting edge. So go ahead and get the calibers out. Blade stock thickness. Now it thins out on both sides. So uh, a little different from what I'm used to measuring. Uh, thickest part of the blade before it starts tapering down. I'm getting right at around 130 thousandths there, 123 thousandths. So if you measure it all the way behind the edge right there, make sure I get it. Behind the edge, you're looking at right around 33 thousandths or so. Um, not especially slicey of a blade. Go ahead and... Uh, before I forget to do the handle here. Not especially slicey of a blade, not like the most large broad blade by any means, but uh 
All right, so you got right at half an inch on the handle uh, thickness there. So that's not especially, um, not especially like a thick handle or anything, and it's not too thin. It's just, you know, to me, I mean, it's just right, especially for the size of the blade that you're looking at. So go ahead and do a uh, hardware check. Can't do it, right, because they got these proprietary, um, they got proprietary hardware on here. It's all screwed in with the Microtech proprietary hardware, which uh, looks cool. But if you want to take it apart and uh, tinker around with it, you know, whatever, then uh, that's not good for that. You know, I I'd definitely prefer like a T8 or something on there. And a lot of their newer models, uh, I've seen the 2024 ones anywhere coming out with, uh, with stuff like that. So go ahead and get the scale out here. The scale out. Let it zero out there. Microtech Direct Delta, 4.4 ounces. Yeah, right at 4.4 ounces. Pretty good, I'd say. Uh, a little bit over the ounce and inch ratio, you know, but not terribly bad. I mean, as far as weight goes, it's not really, to me, all that noticeable in the pocket, you know. Um, it's aluminum handle. And, um, I think the pocket clips titanium tungsten carbide uh, tip on the glass breaker there um materials uh m390 on the blade also so m390 blade uh aluminum on the on the body here and uh tungsten carbide glass breaker there stone wash and uh black on the blade color that's your kind of like i guess material description whatever you want to call it i don't know probably doing terrible with that so we'll check it out get the old blue jeans out here now this thing does uh this clip is kind of tight i think i don't know how to describe it, but it is a little like close see that to the handle now once you get it in your pocket this thing is not going anywhere it's not, it's not going anywhere that's what it looks like when you're carrying it around in your blue jeans you know that's what you got sticking out deep carry microtech clip i really don't mind the clip a lot of people don't like them i don't mind the clip at all you know there's definitely worse pocket knife clips i wish um they were uh, like aesthetically it's not bad i wish they were a little bit you know not as uh tight but i guess that does break in after time always you know got their serial number there from the ones i've seen and uh the birthday there 11 of 2023 was when this one was made and uh then you've got this ridiculously large glass breaker sticking out there that's got the lanyard hole on it. Now, take that out. The glass breaker, I mean, I, I see the point in having a glass breaker, especially if you're a first responder. That's a great thing to have, you know, um, and a lot of people might not mind it. You know, me personally, I would carry this knife, but... I would prefer it not have this glass breaker or it have like a smaller glass breaker like a lot of their 2024 models have. That extra bit sticking out there is, you know, kind of makes things a little awkward. Now, it's not sharp like other a lot of other glass breakers are, and it's not incredibly in the way, you know, but um, I, I would prefer it not to be either not to be there at all or to be, you know, like a little smaller ball at the end of that, just like a lot of their newer stuff is. So uh, we already talked about the hardware. Did the hardware check on it. I really like the action on this one. Uh, this has some severe firing power. Like, this thing rockets out of here. Whenever you fire it, it's coming out. I'd, I'd say it's got more firing power. It is larger than the Ultratech. But um, I'd say it's got a little more firing power than the Ultratech. Now, being as how it's a Microtech, it's guaranteed, you know, for life you, you send it in if anything's wrong with it if anything fails or whatever and uh they'll fix it and um they, they've been pretty good from what i hear on their warranty i've never had to send anything into them i'm sure they would sharpen it also you know um so anyway um i guess i really like it it's a really large out the front knife uh The things that kind of stuck out to me as negatives will be the pocket clip being just so damn tight. It's like, you know, you got to force it past, especially you can get in your pocket decently enough, but to get it past this point to go all the way up like that, 
you know, you do have to kind of, you know, use your other hand and force it in kind of, but giggity. Um, aesthetically, it's really nice. I think, you know, I like this, uh, kind of jump in or, you know, chamfering, whatever you want to call it right there. The edges are, you know, they're all well rounded. There's nothing sharp on here. Standard out the front knife shapes. You know, if you're looking at out the front knives, you're not going to find too many that are uh, drastically different from the shape on this. You know, that's it compared to the to the Ultra Tech right there. Probably should go ahead and uh, being as how I'm doing everything in reverse today, go ahead and do size comparisons. But uh, this is, that's the 8010 next to it. That's the Demco. Demco knives 8020.5. Right. So uh, it's even longer than the 8010, but not as beefy, you know. Um, so you kind of get a good feel for the size. Uh, definitely more cutting edge than both. Or, I don't know. Check out the 8010. Yeah, right at it. Right at the same cutting edge as the 8010 without uh, as large of a presence. At the Ontario Rat Model 1. Ontario Rat Model 2. I just got that one, actually. Still got to do a review on that one. When I was happy to get the little twins going on there. For anybody that's still watching, <laughs> I appreciate it. Putting up with all my rambling. Uh, anyway, a size comparison with the, uh, with the Rat Brothers there. And last but not least, Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Well, not last. So we got a couple more. Pair of 3. Size comparisons there. You know, uh, thinner than the pair of military two. You know, definitely uh, less broad, less tall, I guess. Um, but longer, even longer than the pair of military two, with a little more cutting edge than the pair of military two, also. And uh, definitely way bigger than the pair of three, for sure. Put those away. And two Microtechs that I own. I own two of the, uh, this is the Microtech Stitch Ram Lot. I've done reviews on both of these, but um, this is just for size comparison. And uh, also the Microtech Ultratech, the blue one, also have a black one. And that's got the Tanto blade shape on it. But uh, you can tell it's, uh, I don't know, I would say a good 15 to 20% larger. I'd say about 15% or so larger than the, um, than the Ultratech, right? So, just how the UTX-85 is to the Ultratech, I would say that's a good comparable difference between the Direct Delta and the uh, Ultratech. I really like the front-mounted switch. Um, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people like it. I like it. I um, have no real issues with it. Now, Microtech is in their 2024 models. I haven't had the pleasure of handling one of those yet. But um, in their 2024 models, the description that I'm getting from like uh, watching Metal Complex and watching other people that do this kind of content that I do, they're saying from everything I've seen and heard and coming from the, you know, Microtech herself, of course, the uh, newer models that they're putting out, like the Scarab 2, and I believe they have the Hera and Combat Truodon, the smoother firing, the, the firing switch is a lot smoother on them. So that'd be really nice, I think, to experience in this front mounted uh, switch. To me, it's easier to fire it from the front just because you've got, and it's, it's just more ergonomic. You've got more, you're pressing against and to hold on to kind of from the front. To me, you know, now a lot of people would prefer it, you know, straight out of, when you're grabbing this out of your pocket, you're pulling it out like this, you know, and naturally you're already set to go, right? But when you're pulling this out of pocket, you have to slightly roll it and then fire it, right? A lot of, some people would have a problem with that, you know, I don't see a nanosecond being uh, that important, you know? I mean, I know a lot of stuff can happen, a lot of unforeseen stuff, whatever, but if I'm reaching for my pocket knife, you know, I just don't think that that, split hair of a nanosecond makes a difference with rolling your hand like that you know if that if that's the case you know if you're that worried about it you'd have to i would suggest having a fixed blade you know <laughs> myself but anyway 
Um, I really think it's more comfortable having it on the front. Again, that's my personal opinion. I really like the precision that they've got going on. You know, they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little holes drilled in the center of this. Uh, I think this is actually their bayonet style, I believe. Um, it's kind of like a dagger. I mean, of course, it's sharpened on each side. I would have to look it up to make sure I'm right on that. But uh pretty sure this is uh, the bayonet style that they do. And it, it is just perfectly symmetrical. I haven't found a flaw in it yet. You know, this line goes straight here, straight all the way down to the point. You know, center line's dead on right there and tapers off equally on both sides. It is a beautiful knife. And if you'll notice on the uh, serrated side, you do have a little bit of a uh, little bit of plain sharpen edge there too to kind of get you started. But a lot of people say serrations. Uh, I don't prefer serrations myself, but with an OTF, I could definitely see how you want one, especially in like the dagger grind or saber or uh, not saber um, bayonet, because you know you do have this whole side here to cut with a plain edge. And you've also got a little bit of this side, but this side serration. So if you need to, you know, kind of saw through something or something like that, you're not messing your plane edge up. So it does make a lot of sense to me on uh, a double edge knife like this. Anyway, um, the switch is really super duper comfortable when you're firing it. It gives you a pretty good step up there when you're putting your finger against it. Now, a lot of people have picked this up and the first thing they'll do is try they try to push up like straight up like that and that that doesn't uh it's hard to describe i guess without, without actually feeling it but that doesn't give you as much leverage as you really need to comfortably fire it you got to push kind of in and up like almost into the handle and up at the same time and if you do that it'll fire reliably every time i've never i, I haven't had this thing fail I um, had it for a few days on loan from Mr. Eddie, and I've carried it a couple of days and, um, you know, never had a single issue with it failing. Just like the Ultratech, I've not had an issue with it failing at all. They're pretty reliable from what I've seen. And uh, so I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else. The price point on this, these go for uh, base models, you know, without all the fancy... Uh, Hellraiser type blade shapes or uh, specialty uh, Steamboat Willie stuff or whatever, you know, just a plain uh, serrated, half serrated, you know, uh, apocalyptic finish, I believe is what this is called. Uh, I think they go for right around three, 385 or 390 if you look at them on Blade HQ and DLT. I'll have it linked down in the description below if you want to check it out. Um, I'm not affiliated with anything I'll link yet as of the time of this video. But um, I just put them kind of down below just to help keep you guys, you know, if anybody's interested in buying it. And also, you know, to kind of correct myself because I can get prices wrong and stuff like that. A lot of times I try to have it pulled up um, right next to me when I'm doing a review, you know, just to make sure I'm right. But I didn't, I didn't pull it up this time. But like I said, if you want to double check me down there in the description below. You can definitely check that out. I'm saying I think around 385 or so for um, for this model, at least, of the Direct Delta, which is a lot to pay for a knife, but uh, they do put a lot of quality into making these things. This is an all-American made out the front, you know, and uh, Microtech's a very reputable company. Nothing to worry about from them at all. So anyway, um, check out the link in the description down below. Um, appreciate you guys watching. Check out Mr. Eddie, uh, M R E D D Y underscore four eleven on Instagram. Follow his Instagram page. He's got a lot of cool pictures and a lot of great knives out there. It's all to, uh, thanks to him that I get to look at these, these knives I'm reviewing right now and, uh, this direct Delta. So shout out to him. And, uh, also if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It's free like the video it's free um really means a lot every comment every like every sub subscriber everything i appreciate it guys it means the world to me and uh thank you guys for watching i'll see y'all in the next one